I set up this militia inspired kit from Wilson West. It's going to be a 40 hour event continuously. So I want to walk through the whole kit on my person, what's in my rucksack, what I'll be wearing. Very, go very in detail, it's going to be super autistic. If you like those kind of videos, you know, stick around, it's going to be a long one. Thanks for watching. Try the audio here. Oh, that's a good audio test. Like I mentioned before, we're gonna go through my whole loadout and explain everything in detail. Uh, first thing you wanna start with is the rifle. So, not much has changed since my last video, but same rifle. Um, this is a AK-105 replica, right? Um, the, the only difference here is this laser. So, I kinda mentioned one of this laser in a previous video. And it is a unit that I picked up on um, I think eBay. So this is a $60 IR capable laser. Uh, it's not something that I would probably test on uh, to be reliable on a real firearm, but I think for that application will work really nicely. I have done some testing outside and the, the beam is pretty decent. It's not a full power laser, which is nice in that, in that case as well. It has a few modes, too many. It, probably too many modes than it needs, but you know how Chinese products are. When it comes to the sling, I like these minimal slings. It's just pretty much webbing, but I really like these because they don't bother me. And also these are the, the quick adjustment, right? So you can just like quick adjust and then release. Uh, I got this from Midway USA. I think this is a $14 sling. So yeah, Midway USA over there. This is nice because you can snag it up all the way and it'll ride pretty very close, secure to your body. And if you need it, you just get this pulled out, release it, and then you have freedom to pretty much maneuver the rifle however you want. You can reload, you have access here, you have access there, you can aim. It's just when you're when you're aiming, just the right tension, you still have full space to aim. So pretty good setup here, nothing crazy, nothing fancy. It works, it's simple. Okay, let's talk first line belt. So, this is the belt I'll be wearing. It is a two-piece system, which means this. Okay, this black inner Velcro belt goes in my pen loops, and then the actual belt Velcros on top of it. So, that creates a system that it's pretty rigid, and it's nice to carry medium amounts of weight. This belt is getting a little heavy for my taste just because the handgun is actually a very heavy handgun. But regardless. So working our way from our left side, we have one extra pistol magazine in this Blackhawk pistol mag magazine pouch. Then we have one extra AK magazine in this no brand uh, Chinese magazine pouch. So it is a tall pouch, which is nice. Also, what I had to do is attach it with Velcro loops since I needed to be canted backwards so that the magazine actually clears the big pouch on my chest rig side. So when I pull this out, I'm kind of pulling backwards instead of straight upwards. So this works out really well. Behind it, I have this DMR pouch and this is, has two slots, so it is Divide it. In one slot, I have an extra blank ammo for the hangar. And in the front slot, I have this headlamp, which is super nice and I really like it. It's also very useful. So one click gives you red light. Click it again, you get a brighter red light. Then click it again, it shuts off. And then hold gives you white light. And then press gives you brighter white light. So it's simple to use, it runs on AAA batteries, two of them. It's, it's really nice and it's a four, so I like this a lot. I have a multi-tool that is, slips in, in this elastic pistol magazine pouch, which is zip-tied to the belt because I run out of money space. So this is, can come in very handy, just sits in here. Then this frag pouch, no frags in it, unfortunately, but I do have business cards. So, you know, it's kind of part of the game. You, if people are interested, give them a business card, scan it, brings it to the channel. If you're watching for the first time, welcome to the channel. Behind it, we have a Russian holster. So now, 
The reason why I went with this holster, there's a couple reasons. I wouldn't recommend a holster like this for actual duty use. I always recommend retention holsters, especially like serious retention holders like Safari Lens, right? But the purpose of this event as a militia inspired loadout, it's already way too high speed to be up again. So I needed something that kind of detracted from that look a little bit and it was cheap. And it's also Russian which fits the team. So this is desert EMR pattern also, which it's kind of rare to see and I actually like it. It's kind of tingles my my camo nerdiness. So this is what I got. It's, it's a bit tight because it's probably meant to fit Russian pistols like Tokarevs and whatnot. But I used the um, I used a leg strap on it. And reason being is because um, when when you try to plot the, the handgun, especially since it's such a chunker, it kind of gets hung up and then you're you're pulling it and like this kind of swings upwards. So this this helps a lot. It's it was mega cheap from AliExpress, it was like four bucks, but it's nice, it has stretchiness here and it also has some grippy material here. And then the hand itself. So blank firing handgun, not a real firearm. Beretta replica, this is actually made in Italy. Bruni is probably one of the only companies that makes these kind of things. But what's nice about it is because I want it's obviously a one to one Beretta and then all the controls function the same. Um, it has a magazine in it, so this holds blank ammunition that you saw there. And then the barrel is plugged because when you fire it's actually top firing so the gas is ejected from the top so this is nice in an event like this for, for safety things right so you don't have to worry about i mean you still have to worry about it but you don't have to it's not as dangerous as people around you when you shoot this thing and also it's pretty mild it doesn't shoot a bunch of flames out um so yeah control wise just like a real that it has a two stage trigger that it's actually pretty crisp and i like it it has a nice Break on it and then MB safety, which is nice because it actually disables the trigger completely and it also locks the slide. So it's nice. Lastly, I have some gloves, and this could be interesting because this pouch used to be a 40 millimeter grenade pouch, which I just modified to hold gloves. I just cut it, uh, sew some velcro on the side, and then zip tied it to the back of the belt and now you just stuff your gloves in there and close it and now it holds gloves. Okay, we have my chest over here. I definitely made a decent amount of videos on this thing, but I'm gonna run through it again. Um, okay, beginning. So the base is a spiritus thing too, and that's what allows for this whole expansion to come together. The main uh, blackbird is from per Pershur gear. Um, it is a Chaicom inspired blackbird. Um, the way this works is it has elastic retention on these buttons and you just pull up and you have access to, to your magazines. So then, problem is, closing this is kind of a pain, you have to find the button and put the elastic on it. Um, below that, I run the sword exploitation dump pouch. This thing is pretty cool. It, it's a big dump pouch that unfolds and then you can velcro it open and it holds a lot of magazines. So by not having a dump patch on my belt, I run it on my chest strip. You can throw a bunch of stuff in there. It's definitely not, surely, for just makes sense. Um, on each side, I have two LBT. These are pouches for a M60 machine gun. So these are my favorite pouches that you could buy, at least um, on eBay, right? Because they hold a ton of stuff and they, they have inserts inside that you can move on with velcro based on what you want to carry so the first pouch on my right side of my body has my night vision system and inside of this i have a homemade padding right so this is against the side of my body and then the night vision sits in there also in here i have a reflective arm band if i need to be even more Visible because last time I was shot in the back. Anyway, so night vision system PVS 14, pretty pretty standard green phosphorus, LB2, Gen 3. Um, I have a recorder on it because of course content. Um, the recorder is 
pretty fucking ass, not gonna lie, but for the money, it's okay, I'll use it. And then if it's really that bad, I'll probably sell it, get something different, but it is mounted with this camera over here. Um, it's on a Wilcox J-Arm, and this interferes with the mount on my helmet that I will show later. And then one thing that I have, I have this scope cap that inside I cut a piece of, um, I forgot the material's name, it's kind of like plexiglass, right? So it's for protection. Um, so it's just like pressed in there. Next side, I have um, some zip ties and some electrical tape. Those are for quick field repairs. And then inside the pouch, I have a 500 ml water bottle into which I keep one of these hydration uh, Gatorade powders. I tried these, they're good, they're not super sugary. They're good for a quick hydration boost. So hence why I keep one here already so that I can have that. Then I'm gonna turn this around. So then I have a GoPro in this pouch and it's three here for now, but it will obviously like swap between my vision and GoPro. It has a 3D printed mount that interferes with my helmet again, dovetail obviously, and a homemade uh, protection for the lens. And this just, I, I designed this piece and then you just glue the, the material, you cut the material to shape, glue it, and then this just like slips, it's a press fit, not press fit, but a slip fit over the lens. So the lens is protected. Um, yeah, so GoPro in here, I probably have to keep a couple extra batteries. And then in this middle section, I have some miscellaneous tools, more specifically some Allen keys that I might need. And I have this, um, this lens wipe from Zeiss, which are actually really good. And then lastly, I have some zip tie cutters. Behind it, I have a bow fan radio in the, in the wing expansion behind it. Antenna, and then I have this uh, kind of PTT speaker that it's wired to it, and I can just stop by pressing this button. Knife for opening stuff, whatever. Useful. Um, and yeah, so that's the chest rig setup in details. Um, oh, forgot one thing. The little this is pretty bomb. The you know wipes for glasses, optics, whatever. Actually, mega handy to have in there, and you just shove a finger in there, put it back. So cool, that's the chest rig. Let's move on to the helmet setup. Um, man, I love this thing. So I made a full video about it on my channel. It has a decent amount of view, but in summary, this is a Team Wendy ballistic replica helmet. It's not an actual ballistic helmet. Um, the way I have it set up is somewhat simple. Um, I have the night vision mount, which is a Wilcox replica mount. G24 replica, machined aluminum, works pretty damn good, tested it, uh, disassembled it, put it back together, nothing to complain about, snaps right in, holds nicely. I have some extra security for the mount itself, and then some extra security for the NVG system itself, so it's kind of double redundant there. I have some uh, Russian patches uh, for identification, again, don't wanna get shot in the back of the neck once again, also, we're the bad guys, so... We're bad guys, it's what we do. Bad guy patches. Then, counterweight system and strobe. So the strobe I'm actually probably not gonna use, but first of all, I have it and second of all, it looks cool. It is there, it works with IR and Viz. Also kind of helps redistribute the weight. And then in the counterweight pouch, pouch I have in a Ziploc bag um, one counterweight, which is lead, this is fishing weight, and then four extra batteries. Super overkill, I probably won't need this many batteries, but they sit in my helmet regardless, I wouldn't, I don't really take this out. These are lithium ion double E's because that's what the night vision likes. So this helmet is super comfortable. I, here's the, you know, closer to the, closer look at the retention system. Again, Team Wendy style retention system with the ratcheting mechanism and then the padding also Team Wendy like, but I replaced some of the padding here. The gray ones are actually FMA and you can get the kit on Amazon for $15, the whole kit for the helmet, but I only needed some specific pads. 
Um, I like this pad, like right in the middle of my head. Um, I tried it before and I was getting a hot spot kind of like right here. So that's why I swapped out the pads. And it's important to understand that because if I didn't, staying two days with a hot spot on your head is pretty miserable. But this is comfy. I added these side ones too. Um, so yeah, I really like this helmet. It's pretty uncomfortable. And it's gonna be good to serve its purpose, both obviously in its imperative for night vision usage. You need a helmet to, to kind of call those. But also, for me, it serves dual purposes because it's gonna hold a GoPro during the daytime. And also, being that it is an urban kind of environment, um, bonking your head into stuff just feels horrible all the time. So any bump protection is also really nice to have. So clothing wise, uh, really simple. Um, T-shirt underneath. And then you saw me at the beginning, uh, I'll be wearing my 511 pants, right? These are the pants I go to war to every day. So as you can see in a minute, I will bring a change of uniform, right? I have those woodland combat pants, but I was just kind of checking myself on the mirror. I was like, man, this looks kind of dope. Just cargo pants, like beige, tan cargo pants. And then the SS Lito top. It just looks a bit more appropriate for the role, if that makes sense. And then I have this pretty light SS Lito top. Um, it's light, I like it, it looks pretty swaggy. One item that doesn't get talked about enough but gets a lot of credit is a good watch. So to talk about fully in-depth kit, you need to talk about the watch. This is my go-to field watch, it's a marathon. And what's super nice about it, it's obviously very lightweight, super accurate. It's also, this is government issue watch and um, the, the case is constructed out of this fiberglass composite. Um, it is meant for pilots to go in various pressure changes. Um, but what's nice about it for people that are in duty scenario, uh, for me is, you know, you got sapphire crystal, which is very scratch resistance, very hard crystal. And also the hour markers and hands have tritium gas tubes in it. So what that means is that these, even though obviously under bright lights, you, you can see it, these are always emitting some sort of light because tritium is a decaying isotope uh, of hydrogen. So you'll see this pretty bright in the middle of the night and you could tell what time it is. Also has a rotating bezel, which is bi-directional with a 12 hour mark on it. So what that allows you to do is track a second time zone without having a complex uh, GMT uh, movement. For my rucksack, I definitely learned a lot of lessons from last time of what not to overpack. So this is the Marine Corps rucksack that I've been using. I really like it, you can find it used. So it's pretty loaded. So looking from the outside, the one thing that I did that I think it's very important is I tied, tied off all the extra straps because those get in the way and there's a million of them flying everywhere. So it's important to kind of keep that under control. So I have one nudging bottle accessible from the outside and I will have another one on the inside there. So for water source, additionally, this rucksack comes with a feature that allows you to store the camelback on the inside of here. So if we open the top and we disconnect this, opening this, you can see how this kind of sits in there. And it's, all, it's not meant for this specific model of camelback, but regardless, it works for its purpose. So the first thing that I have on the top pouch, which is easily accessible, a beanie for if it gets cold at night, this keeps your head very nice and warm. It's super nice to have. And then emergency blanket for, for cold weather. Then my hygiene kit. So the hygiene kit has in Ziploc bags, it has toilet paper, wet wipes, and then I have some combat wipes for wiping the body. Contact lenses supplies. Um, I need to have a toothbrush there for, for, for hygiene, dental hygiene. I have some floss, a toothbrush and chopstick. Then this pouch contains prescription safety glasses in case I get tired of wearing contacts and regular safety glasses. And then lastly here, a small medical kit 
for small herds. So this medical kit has an assortment of things like uh, stomach issues, burns, band-aids, uh, some bigger cuts as pads, and then it has ibuprofen and this uh, the stuff which is kind of like super glue but medical rated if you cut yourself. So just small, small little things that could happen to anybody. So actually getting into it, one thing that also I keep easily accessible is a just a waterproof jacket, uh, just in case of unexpected rain. This is right under my, my lid cover and it just slides in here. So in case it rains, this is very easy to find. I can pull it out, cover myself. At the very top, I have this travel compression, not compression, but travel pouch. And this has some clothes in it. It's not complete, but for right now, I have my Arc'teryx Atom LT jacket. It's a kind of compact insulated jacket. If it gets colder than uncomfortable, it keeps you war warm down to 34 degrees, depending on the person. And on this side is where I pack down a uniform change. I have a black slash Adidas combat suit and woodland uh, combat pants. So this is to change in case I need to. This smaller pouch contains some batteries. This holds SD cards for GoPros and cameras and it's waterproof. 550 cord and then more fog wipes and a Baofeng earpiece PTT as a backup in case mine dies. Then at the very bottom, we get into the food, which is somewhat heavy. I slim down a lot on the food. I put everything in silicon Ziploc bags. In this one, I have utensils and more of that hydration um, powder. Then I have some chocolate covered banana, dried banana, it's good sweet. Again comes the, the tub of squeezable peanut butter. I have these peanut butter crackers, which are pretty calorie heavy and fill, fill you up a decent amount. Uh, beef jerky for protein. Then I have these protein bars, which are again, good calorie supplements with protein. And then as meals, all I'm bringing this time is this uh, tuna meals that includes some sort of carb and tuna as a protein. So you get 170 calories and about 10 to 15 grams of protein. So from a macro standpoint, this covers everything you need. And also I'm pretty aware of my diet and what my requirements are at the moment. I am in a slight calorie deficit. I skip breakfast, so this will be able to be lunch, dinner, supplemental food throughout the day, breakfast, whatever. This will cover all its light and last time overpacked. So I learned that lesson there. We, we can access our sleep system from the side. So I unbuckle a couple of these and allow the zipper to gain access to the subdivided part of the pack, which allows sleeping essentials a blow up pad for under the sleeping bag, which is very compact. A blow up pillow, which is super light, it's small and it's a major luxury to have. And then we have the sleeping bag itself. This sleeping bag, it's not for the coldest kind of weather, but it's pretty compact and it was affordable. So I'm gonna give it a try. Then we have, as an extra item, this is a Wobi blanket. Um, it is kind of tied down in this stuff sack. Um, if you guys don't know what Wobi blankets are, are just pretty much just a blanket, just extra blanket to have and get temperatures drop. And then the very last thing in here is a waterproof tarp. 
um, in case there is need for rain coverage, which I don't think there will be. Okay, so thanks for watching. I walked through my entire setup. Um, if you have any questions, comment it. This is gonna be a video that is not monetized, so feel free to say whatever you want. No censorship. Now we do what we want. YouTube can go fuck itself.